Hi, everybody. I'll take a minute for everybody to kind of hop in. You are joining me from my lovely kitchen. Um, you can see that uh, we've got a beautiful, nice, cloudy day. Anya eats. Hi. Um, I'm so excited that the weather cooperated with me. I did a little phone call in and I was like, listen, I need a nice cloudy day on Friday. Semper Fi, hey, hello. Um, <laughs> hi, hi, how's it going? I'm excited to see so many of you guys over here. So um, last week was my first Periscope and um, it was a little crazy. Um, hi, Amy Shree, hi. Um, so this week I actually, um, I did um, a solid for you guys. I went out and got a tripod extension. So hopefully, fingers crossed, I won't be um, dropping my phone again. Hey, Downshiftology, I'm glad you're here. Um, so I just wanna say thank you guys for coming. Um, we've got a beautiful cloudy day, um, what I would describe as a beautiful cloudy day to do some great indoor uh, food photography. So um, I just want to say hi, my name is Trisha. For those of you guys who don't know me, my website is called Eat Your Beats. And um, I am a food photographer, a food blogger, and I help other foodies, photographers and bloggers help um, them get the knowledge they need to take amazing pictures um, of whatever it is that they want to be taking pictures of. So um, over the past uh, year, it was my love of food photography and taking pictures every single day on Instagram that helped give me over 100,000 Instagram followers. So I'm so excited to be able to share the knowledge that I have with you guys. And I hope you're excited to learn more about my process. Um, if you guys know anybody who would be really interested, um, I just want to ask you guys share if you want to share this uh, live broadcast with your friends, your, tell your mom, tell um, anybody who will listen if they are really interested in food photography, styling, specifically styling in low light situations such as we have today. Um, I know it doesn't look like a low light situation, but it is actually quite dark and, and cloudy. So if you have friends who would be really interested in this information, just go ahead and share it tweet it out. Thank you. Thank you, Anya Eats. Thank you. Thanks. Um, yeah, you guys, thank you. So yeah, share with your friends and let everybody know um, if they want to see it that I'm here and I'm live. So now I'm just going to kind of like uh, condense. <laughs> I have no followers, Ink and Indigo. That's not true. That's not true. I'm sure that you do. Um, I, the Basically what I want to cover today is we're going to talk about light right? The types of light and how to find your light. We're also going to talk about position, positioning your subject so that you're really able to sort of grab that brilliant, beautiful light and make the best of it. Um, we're going to talk about some um, key things that I actually use when I'm shooting that are going to help sort of absorb some of that light or maybe block some things that um, <clears throat> might give us color casts. Um, so basically, um, I'm going to let you see what I'm doing over here. I'll probably move you to the other side of my kitchen once I get set up so you can actually see. Um, we're at the end of the week, so um, I didn't actually have much food <laughs> to prepare today, so I just made a, a quick soup. Um, it's got bok choy and uh, mushrooms, and I'm just going to kind of shoot that really quickly. Um, like I said, I didn't have anything cooked up this morning to, um, to share or blog about, so I'm just going to shoot my lunch, right? So that's what we're going to do. Um, so basically what I talk about when I talked about light is the first thing I want you guys to notice is that I'm in my kitchen and while it does look very bright, it's actually um, an overcast cloudy day. So you have a couple of options when you um, have overclass and cloudy days. Hey, I just saw a question, organic RD. Did you teach yourself food photography? So a couple of things. Um, yes, I, I did. Um, my best girlfriend, um, her name's Courtney Slaznik from clickitupanotch.com. She actually taught me how to shoot in manual, um, but it was those tools that I used to kind of teach myself um, styling and, um, you know, take those tools that I knew of natural light, normal photography, trying to take pictures of wiggly toddlers. And I realized that um, food is much more compliant and listens much better than my children. So I kind of took my love for uh, natural light photography and transferred it to food. Um, so yes and no. But listen, I do want to answer all your questions, but I'm going to wait till the end so that I can give you this great content and then answer the questions at the end. Okay. So 
As I was mentioning, when you have low light situations, you have a couple of different conditions. So you can have a high visibility overcast day, which is what I would consider this to be. It's definitely cloudy. We don't have that bright golden yellow sun, but we do have a lot of light coming in. Um, another type of overcast cloudy day would be a low visibility cloudy day. So that's a day where it's very, very dark. Um, you know, you've got a lot of cloud coverage and the light is not as obvious. So I'm in my kitchen and I've just got a couple of really nice windows here. Um, and I actually have, I'll turn my tripod. I have the ability, see how bright that looks streaming in? Um, my phone is actually, I think, enhancing the light because it doesn't look that bright in my kitchen. And I've, obviously I have all my overhead kitchen lights um, turned off. So it looks really bright because I have these two windows and don't be afraid to kind of manipulate that light if you have curtains or blinds and I we just have blinds here so I can adjust the amount of light that's coming in and you can see how that's going to adjust the different type of um, shooting surface that I'm gonna have available. That actually looks so bright, you guys. I wish this was more like true to life so you could see it's not as bright as it looks because you think I'm lying. <laughs> um, so I've got these two great window lights. So the first thing that you wanna do when you're looking for a light source is that you wanna go around your house and find those places where the light is gonna be the most obvious. And the way that I do that is I kind of come down here and I don't know if you can see like the floor area, but I'm looking for areas where the light is gonna be the brightest shining on the floor. So it's brighter here as the light comes in the window, brighter here than it is here. So a couple of things to note about that is that depending on how much light and how much contrast you want in your image, you will place your subject closer to or further from your light source. So that's just a couple of tips. So I actually use a end table. Arthur, turn the TV down, please. Turn it down, turn it down. So I actually use an end table and you can see that this is an end table that I use from, um, I think I got it at Home Goods. Um, so when I move this end table around, you can see that the light is gonna change, right? So it looks a little darker here and I can pick up that brightness of the light and I can move it closer and I have even more light, right? So that's just a way that you're training your eye to see that light on those surfaces and seeing where you have the best light. <clears throat> so once I get, my light set up, the next thing I'll do is place my board on top. And this is actually um, a wooden board from Erickson Woodworks. Um, and it's a really nice large surface. Um, it's larger than my end table. If you're shooting with a smaller surface, um, don't be afraid to, I actually have a really great, um, very small marble pastry board, which is probably half the size um, of of this board, you can see it's much smaller. So if you're working with a super small space, even if you have a tiny surface like this, don't be afraid to use that tiny surface space. You can still get great shots. Sorry, that's really heavy, I didn't wanna break it. Um, so basically, once I get my shot set up and I know where my light is gonna be really nice, I'm gonna move this around a little and then I'll move the camera too so you guys can see. So then I'm just gonna start styling whatever it is I wanna take pictures of. So, so, oh, I'm sorry. I'll help you in a minute, okay? As I said, I have my three-year-old at home. So, I mean, working moms, what are you gonna do, right? Um, so, Arthur gets hearts. He always gets lots of hearts. I should have him come over and, and do a little cameo for you guys. Um, he's playing with his magnetiles, which are amazing toddler toys. If you don't have magnetiles, I definitely recommend you get some because they're really fantastic. So um, basically, I'm just gonna try to place my soup down here. And um, <laughs> thank you. And what I like to play a lot with, um, as I mentioned in my um, previous Periscope, is I love linen. Linen napkins are really great texture-wise. Um, they fold really beautifully, they lay beautifully, and they kind of stay where you want them to stay, which is really fun. So I'm gonna kind of just place my linen here. And something that I like to do when I'm styling is work in layers, right? So my first layer would be my backboard. My second layer would be this um, piece of wood. And then my third layer is gonna be this napkin, right? And then I'm just gonna kind of keep building on each of these layers. So I've got this beautiful copper pot and 
This copper pot is actually one of my favorite things to shoot with because not only is it a beautiful color, but it actually has a reflective surface on the inside so it shines light back into um, whatever you're shooting, which is great because sometimes things in bowls can kind of get sucked into um, darkness, right? So, and this is a little kind of wonky, so I'm just gonna push my napkin up a little, give it a little bit more height on that one side. And then I've got my soup here. Like I said, it's nothing fancy. I'm actually gonna do this over here so I don't spill. Cause I make a big mess in general. So I'm just gonna kind of put some of my soup in here and I may actually take out some of the liquid. I know you guys are having a hard time seeing, but I may actually take out some of this liquid because I want the soup to look a little chunkier. So I think I'm gonna take out some of this liquid here. So this is just a regular, I mean, this is my lunch. It's nothing fancy. It's just soup with some bok choy and mushrooms, and I put some chickpeas that I had cooked the other day. Um, it's not a glamorous soup, I should say. So I took some broth out, so what I'm gonna do is add some more chunky stuff back in, because we like to see those chunky pieces of um, whatever it is that you're kind of shooting, especially if you're trying to highlight something, like a really chunky, you know, hearty soup. So, and then I'm gonna take some more broth out, sorry. This is just a process, I would say, something that you kind of go through and you see what looks best to you. And I don't think there's any right or wrong way to do something. It's totally preference on what you like the best. So I've taken some of this broth out and it's looking a little chunkier now, right? So I've got my layer of the soup. And as I mentioned before, you can see that this kind of has a nice shimmer to it, it's bouncing some light back in here. And I'm just gonna kind of move this around even further. And I might even change the position of this dish. So the reason I changed the position is because I kind of felt like my shot was getting a little heavy on this side of the board. So that's something that I kind of talk about when we discuss composition, um, is that if you feel like one side of your frame or image has a lot going on, then maybe it's a little heavy. So do things to break up that um, heaviness, right? So I felt like I had a lot on this side of my board and I wanted to break it up a little. So I'm gonna move the handle to this left side and I'm just gonna move the, there's Arthur, say hi. Um, I'm just gonna move the, um, vegetables to one side and then this tin is actually going to highlight the vegetables in the soup which I think is really cool. I've got some watermelon radishes so I'm just going to throw some of these in here for color as well and actually ugh, this watermelon radish ended up being more green than pink which is kind of a bummer when you are hoping it's got that bright green uh, or bright pink color to it. Here stand back, stand back, don't push the board. Hmm? No not right now, I will later. So then when I talked about layers, something else that I want to add in is I'm going to add some um, herbs to go on top as just another fun layer of something that's going to be part of the shot. So I just usually, I'm pretty messy. I don't really have a method. I just kind of cut and then remove if things are looking, if things are looking crazy or like there's too much of them. And you can tear these, of course, obviously. Um, but in general, I think you'll see most of my images don't look um, perfect and polished. And it's the imperfections that honestly, um, that I prefer. I mean, that's my life, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm not going to turn it on right now, but you can do something else while you're waiting. Okay, so I've got some cilantro here and I'm just going to pull some out because it's looking a little, like a little too much cilantro here. So I'm just going to pull some out. All right, I'm gonna move you guys over to this side so you can see what happens when I start setting up my shot. Feel free to give me lots of hearts while I'm doing this, while I'm taking you guys over here. There they are, thank you. Apparently hearts mean something, right? It's a big deal if you get a lot of hearts. Um, okay, I want to imperfections rule my kitchen. That's right, the paper apron. That's pretty much what you're working with here with me. I wanna get this camera angle really nice. So. I want you guys to see how the light changes depending on where um, kind of my soup is, right? So it's a little harder to read, 
when um, you've got that bright light from the window coming in. So it's a little harder for you guys to see, but basically if I wanna move this around, the closer I get, I'm starting to get some shadows over here because of my sink. So if I move a little further away, you can see that it's gonna change how much light you have and where your light is coming from. And you really want to find the place that you want to um, draw attention to and really highlight that. And so my, um, my dish here, I kind of want to prop it up on this side so that I can show a little bit more light. So if you want to prop something up, I recommend just using like anything, anything small. I mean, this is, um, coffee filters, right? So like anything that you could fold or that's going to be small, just kind of pop it underneath here and then hide it, right? So it's a little too tall. There we go. That looks good. So anyways, I've got my coffee filter under here, just something to bump up this shot. I know it looks really bright to you guys. Um, I don't think I can adjust the brightness on my uh, phone, but it's not as bright as it seems. And once I'm done, I'll post these pictures. I'll edit them and post them so you guys can see what it looks like. Um, I might give you some straight out of the camera too, but so basically, let's see if I can pop this up a little. The next thing I'm gonna do is use these big black mat boards that you can find at the craft store. Um, you can get these where they um, frame images. So anywhere like Michael's or um, any craft store that does framing, they sell these large black mat boards. And these boards are something that I use um, to not only be a background, so you don't see my house, my laundry, my kitchen, but I use these to kind of absorb some light as well. So I usually try to put one right here. And I just wanna draw your attention quickly to something that I my eye catches naturally. So if you guys start training your eye to look for shadows, the first thing that I see naturally is, see this beautiful shadow over here that's coming in, that's caused from the board. Things like this, just noticing that, training your eye to see that shadow is so great because you're learning where you can place your subjects and um, you know where's gonna be the best place for them. So because I've got two of these large mat, mat boards, I can either put one here and you can see as I start to put this around to this side, it's going to cast more shadows into my dish here. So I would never put it in front of my light source, right? Cause then I wouldn't have light. But if you want to kind of do a little peekaboo type thing, if you pull this back just a little bit, then you guys can even see that I've just got a ray of light that's kind of shooting into that. So I'm going to hop on my chair. I'm going to take a quick snap so that I can show you that. And I'm shooting with um, my Nikon D800. This is a full frame camera. And I've got my 50, my nifty 50, 1.8. So I'm just going to take a quick shot. I hop up on my chair because I always stand on a chair and I'm just going to take a quick shot to show you guys what this little peekaboo light situation kind of looks like. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I see now that my shot is a little underexposed. So I'm going to up my um, ISO. And as I'm shooting, I can kind of see that I really need to pull this down a little to get more into my frame, what I'm trying to get, because it's looking a little, um, not, not exactly what I wanted. So you get a big time. Arthur, shh. Okay, so the other thing to note is that I'm just gonna take one more shot because I wanted to turn my thing. And I see you guys are asking questions. I'm sorry, I don't have a wingman to help read those questions, but I'll definitely, um, I'll definitely answer any questions you have afterwards. So I just caught a really beautiful shot, and I don't know if I can show you. I can't show you back of the camera because it just doesn't look as good. But anyways, I can't wait to post that one. It's a really good example of using the boards to do like a peekaboo type thing. And so because I did that, I'm just going to take a quick pullback so you guys can see as well. Okay. Because I know you guys love the pullbacks. Give me some hearts if you love pullback shots. I know everybody loves those. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. So I just took a couple of pullbacks um, of what this looks like. And then you guys will be able to see sort of that peekaboo thing that I just did. So then the other thing that normally I would do is come over here and place the board um, on this side so that 
I've got this nice light coming in from my window and these dark mat boards are sort of sucking up any light that might bounce from something back into my shot. So having, that's that third component that I feel like is really important. Um, either placing your subject far enough out of the frame so you're not getting any light or using something that's gonna suck up any light that could be bounced back into your frame. Really important. Um, so what I like to do is also, if you have cabinets, um, so like the, the, the cabinets in my house are quite orangey, so they can cast um, a really um, not cute color cast on things, so I don't um, love that. So I typically try to use these foam boards as well to um, kind of uh, absorb that color cast and block it from making my pictures look more orange. Or give me a like heart if you guys know what I mean. If you guys have cabinets that like put color casts on your food and you're like, why does this look orange? It shouldn't be orange. Well, it's probably your cabinets. It's the light bouncing off your cabinets. So thanks. So basically I'm over here and you know, I'm just going to switch my lens quickly and do some close up shots. So I'm just going to take my 50 off and I'm going to put my super favorite, um, 105 millimeter macro lens. <laughs> it makes so much sense, right? It does. So this is my um, this is my money lens. I love this lens um, it, because it's perfect for getting those super tight close-up shots. If you want to get like the grains of salt on something, um, or like the super tight swirls of a cupcake, the 105 millimeter is like, yep, yeah, she loves her 105 too. You do. You need a macro. Listen, I went back and forth on getting a macro for ages, and I finally got one, and I was like, holy cow, what was I waiting for? Um, so I'm just going to take a few quick macro shots because I love them so much and um, I try to do quite a bit of macro. Yep, next on your list, right? Of course. Yep, add it to your list. Christmas, birthday, anniversary, push present, push present. Ask for lenses if you're having babies, ladies. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to take some quick shots and I've got this beautiful... Um, I've got this beautiful, beautiful um, water, watermelon radish in here, and it's so gorgeous with the pink color. That's something I really love to play up to is the colors. So I've got the green of the cilantro, and I've got the pink of the watermelon radish, and they're just beautiful, like contrasting colors that look so pretty together. So I'm just gonna, I got a quick snap of this with the macro. I'm gonna get one more. Okay, beautiful. I'm loving the shadows in this. So I'm gonna switch my lens back quickly taking off my 105. Do I ever use a tripod? Um, I didn't catch your name, sorry, but um, yes and no. I like a tripod, but um, the problem that I find is that I move quite a bit and I don't have the patience for moving a tripod. So I do use a tripod if I'm trying to use a super slow shutter speed. And um, <laughs> she just says, flip and delish. I never got a push present, come on, yeah. You have to back pedal. Now, how many kids do you have? You have a lot of things coming to you. <laughs> um, <laughs> No, but yeah, I do use a tripod sometimes if I'm trying to catch a motion shot. Um, I will, yes, Organic RD. I will. I'll post before and after. I don't typically, um, but I will do that for you guys because I know you want to see um, before and after um, editing, so for sure. Um, so again, back to the tripod. If I'm trying to capture a shot of something moving, like syrup or, or dusting sugar or something, I will use a tripod because I'm using a much slower um, shutter speed, and so I can't afford to have that hand shake. Um, but in general, for daily shooting, I rarely use my tripod um, just because I move so much and um, I don't I don't have the patience for it. So okay. We've got another beautiful shot that we can create here. So I'm just gonna hop up on my chair, go back to my 50. And I would say, you know, for you guys who are shooting in manual, just to kind of give you an idea, my ISO is currently set at 2000. So for some of you, that may seem like, I want you to see my face, sorry. For some of you, that may seem like an insanely high number, but I would just say that you know, do what you need to do to get your shot, right? So does, does 2000 ISO sound quite high to some of you guys? Give me some hearts if it does. Does that sound high? Are you guys scared to go that high? Some of you, does it, is it grainy? No, no, and I would say like, it's not, um, it's not grainy. So I'm, I'm assuming um, the, the Kelly, I think I got your name right. 
Sometimes people assume that when you use a much higher ISO, you're going to have a noisy image. I don't find that to be the case um, when I'm shooting, but a lot of it just depends on your light source. <laughs> Not scared, just never do it. Come on, you gotta do it. <laughs> Um, a lot of it depends on your light source, right? So if you are, um, you know, I don't want to say doing your due diligence because that sounds like lame, right? But if you're taking the time to say, where's my light source? Can I put my subject closer to my light source? Um, then your ISO, even if it's screaming high, right? Like if you're at the ceiling of it, if you have a steady hand or you're using a tripod and you've got that great light source, um, then you, you're not going to have an image that has a lot of noise in it. So. Um, I just, yes, Arthur, I hear you calling me. Can, can I help you? Yeah. What can I help you with, Arthur? No response. Does anybody else have toddlers at home? Give me some hearts. If I've got some people who have little kids at home. <laughs> There's a few. Okay, so I'm just going to snap a couple of more quick shots of this soup, and I'm going to kind of move this uh, handle. There we go. Okay, basically beautiful. I love everything that I have going on. Eee! Very cute. All the babies. Hooray. Hooray for babies. All right, so now that I'm standing in this really great light, um, I just wanted to let you guys know that I have a freebie that I made for you guys, um, and it's the four tools that I, nap time here right now, you're lucky. My Latin, we don't take naps anymore. Um, I created a freebie for you guys, and it is the four tools that you need um, to take food photography images like a pro. I have the link to that freebie in my um, Instagram profile, or you guys can go here. I don't know if you can see that, if it's backwards or not. Is this backwards for you guys? Somebody let me know. Oh, I just saw somebody take a screen capture. Way to go. That, yes, yes, people, take the screen capture. Perfect. So this is eatyourbeats.leadpages.co backslash photog tools. This is going to be your link to get your freebie from me. That's my freebie. Hold on, Arthur. So... I'm the screen capture queen all day. Me too. You know what I screen capture? Those funny memes. Like if I see something really funny that makes me laugh, I screenshot it and send it to my best friend. Who does that? <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to take like, um, yay, flipping delish. I already got my freebie. Awesome. I'm just going to take like five minutes. If you guys have questions, please um, ask away. I'm here to answer questions for about five minutes. And then I think I have... Um, a toddler who's sitting on a toilet and needs his bum wiped that my life is so glamorous you guys Do, Don't you wish you had my glamorous life? Um, flip and delish. I screenshot memes all day and text them to my husband. Yep, exactly You have to have somebody to laugh with right? Does anybody have questions about my process or light or anything? <laughs> Ink and indigo you can relate to the toddler on the toilet <laughs> This is water by the way. I might need vodka it's too early for vodka. <laughs> um, if my phone photos are grainy, is there not enough light? Little coconutty. If your photos are grainy, it could be that you have a combination of not enough light, one, or um, too high of an ISO. So that's a combination that I would sort of look for. Take your things over to, take your subject over to better to your light source and see if you can kind of bring down that ISO. If that means even, if you're shooting in manual, um, I assume, if that means even bringing your shutter speed down just a pinch, I don't shoot below one 125th, um, but that may help or giving yourself a higher aperture number um, so you're letting in more light. Remember, if you have a higher aperture number, you're letting in more light. Um, but at the same time, you're letting in more parts of your um, story on your board. So I typically shoot around 3.2, 3.5. I have a crop camera. How much do you love your full frame? The Kelly. Um, I do love my full frame. Um, I'm a weird person that feels like they have to earn things. So like <laughs> I made myself cook with a like a hand mixer for two years before I felt like I'd earned my stand up KitchenAid mixer. Um, Arthur, please wait. 
So I shot with my um, mid-level camera, Nikon D90, for about two years until I upgraded to my full frame. One of the reasons that I upgraded was because of that higher ISO number. It gives you um, a lot more play when you're working in lower light conditions. And I love my full frame, and yeah, I, I love it. But it's not for everybody, I understand. Um, any other questions? Can you hear the mom, mom, mom? Give me some hearts, you guys. <laughs> Why gray and black boards instead of white? Um, why gray and black boards? Um, because that's me. I just prefer gray and black. Um, I have a friend, uh, Lisa from Downshiftology. She painted um, her a room in her house white. It's gorgeous. It looks amazing. Um, I used to use white, but I just found like the back of these boards is white or cream. You know, if I wanted to use the back of the board, I certainly could. But I just feel like black is a personal prefer preference. Yep, Flip and Delish says she uses white boards. You certainly can. Um, if you're shooting in a low light condition, you don't want to use white boards. That's going to bounce light back into your frame, which could be useful. If you're one of the girls who just mentioned she has a noisy image, and so if you are at your threshold of ISO and find that you can't bring it any higher, um, using a white reflector board is going to bounce light back into your image. But for my purposes, um, <laughs> I want the light sucked out of my image. So that's why. Um, somebody asked, what do I edit? I edit with Lightroom 5. Do you hear that? You hear that noise? Okay, you guys, I'm going to stop here. Thank you so much for coming. Again, please go get your freebie. Um, if you are interested in my um, full resource that I have, I have a whole ebook on food photography called Eat Pretty Things, Blitz and Glam. Yay, got her four tools resource. Hooray. Um, so I do have a full ebook on my website. Um, Eat Pretty Things is my full resource to, um, to food photography. And I'm really excited because I am currently writing a low lighting food photography resource. So I I already have it written. I just need to get some of my pictures together and then I'll be able to put that together for you guys. So I'm really excited. So thanks. Stay tuned. Yay! I'm glad you guys came. Um, and then um, thank you, Kelsey. I'm glad you love it. Thank you. Yeah. I'm glad you guys came. Enjoy your resource. Find me over on Instagram. I'm go eat your beets. Woo. And I'll see you guys next week. Okay. Bye.